In this video, we're going to do the least squares regression line. We're going to do the alternative form. Usually, we calculate the regression using these two formulas. A in this case is the slope, and B is the y-intercept. You can see that usually you'll have to do sums of x times y, sum of x, sum of y, sum of x squared. And then after that, after you find the sums, you pop them into the formula and you get your regression line. But there is an alternative way of doing this, and it's these two formulas down here. A, again, is the slope. What you're going to need is the correlation coefficient, which I'll show you in the video. You can uh, click on this link on the top right here, this card for correlation coefficient. You can also calculate, you're going to need to calculate SY and then SX. SY is the standard deviation for Y, SX is the standard deviation for X. And then B is the Y-intercept, and you're going to need the mean for Y and the mean for X. And then, of course, you're going to need A. A is the calculation that you did with this. All right, so let's look at an example. So here we have a table that describes the ages of children and their, le and their reading level. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five pairs. Okay, so we're going to need to calculate R, S of um, SY, SX, SY is the standard deviation for Y, standard deviation for X, um, this guy right here, which is X bar and Y bar. So one thing that you could do is to find these using your calculator. Now, if your teacher allows you to use the alternative forms and you're using the calculator and the teacher lets you use the calculator, then this is appropriate. But sometimes when you're taking a test, you're going to have to find R by hand. You're going to have to find SY by hand, SX by hand, X bar by hand, Y bar by hand. And so the test can, you know, be very cumulative. But ultimately, the payoff is that you can calculate the slope and the y-intercept. But in this case, we're going to use our calculator to calculate R, SY, SX, X bar, Y bar. And these are the values on the screen. X bar is 8.8, .8, SX is 2.775, Y bar is 3.84, SY is 2.286, R is equal to 0 0.991. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, let's find A and B. Let's uh, show our work. So we take the formula for A, we plug in 0.991 for R, and then 2.286 divided by 2.775. You calculate that, that gives you 0.816. One thing to note very quickly about the slope, which is A equals R times SY over SX. You can see this piece right here. That's, if you remember the slope, Y equals MX plus B in algebra, the slope is the change in Y over the change in X, right? The rise over the run. So we still keep that formality that Y is on the top, X is on the bottom. And when I mean the top, the numerator and the bottom, the denominator. But you already knew that. Okay. So, here is B, which is the y-intercept. You can see that B has a, a negative sign. That is right here. And then you have A, which is this, which is that, right? You calculate A. If A has a negative, then you put another negative, and two negatives are going to make a positive, but that's not what's happening. Okay, all I want you to know is that that negative, you're going to have to put out here. And then you got A. Then you got, what's the next thing? X bar, which you calculated. And then you have Y bar. And then you use PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You multiply and then you add. Okay? And there you go. B is negative 3.341. Okay, 
So a lot of the times your teachers will be like, we well, haven't really finished because you haven't, you know, you have to write down what the model is, what the linear regression equation is, which is the least square regression uh, formula. So we write it down. Y hat equals 0.816x, take away 3.341. Now you can see that I have it over here, right? You have Y hat. The hat represents an estimation with data. You got A, which you calculated, right? With this formula right here, which is uh, 0.816x, because you, if you want to predict some y value, you have to you have to plug in an x value, and then you have the y intercept, which you just calculated a second ago. So this is our model right here. This is our linear equation. This describes a line for our data. And what can you use this for? Well, next que next question: What is the predicted value when the age of the child is twelve point three years old? Hmm. So you can predict um, reading levels, in this case, reading levels, by using our um, writing down the model. So what we do is we plug in 12.3 into our model, and we get 6.698. I'm sorry, 6.696. What is 6.696? Well, it turns out that that right there is the estimation of the reading level if the child is 12.3 based on our data. So if this data set changes, then our estimation will change as well. The more data you collect, hopefully and most likely, your answer will be more accurate and precise. Okay, next, for every one year the child ages, how much of a reading level do they, do they change? Hmm, so we're going to still use the model, but we're not going to use the y-intercept anymore. What we'll do is we'll just take the slope and x, and then what we'll do is we'll plug in 1 because they want to know for one year. And so here after we plug in 1 into 0.816, we get 0.816 increase for each year of growth. So the reading level, right? You can put over here the reading level, right? Increases 0.816 for each year of growth, okay? You can also, um, you know, instead of one year, you can do two years or you can do 10 years or something. The idea is that you can figure out a change in reading levels based on the change in age. Okay, I hope that uh, helps you a little bit. Again, this alternative form, right, to wrap up, this alternative form is a it's a very nice way of calculating the slope in the y-intercept, but there are some consequences on this, which I didn't really go over um, when we were talking about this. One thing is that if you calculate any of these very, you know, these values, they're kind of constant as long as the data doesn't change. These values right here, you got to keep many. Um, you got to make it so that don't round any of these values, okay? Now, depending on your teacher, and your teacher will tell you exactly how many numbers you should keep. You know, is it tens, hundreds, thousands, hundred thousands? Do you have to keep all the numbers, right? It all depends on your teacher. The more numbers you keep from your calculations, the better. And then in the end, you should around appropriately. You know, it could be anything, so he or she will explain to you on that. All right. I hope you have fun and I'll be seeing you later. Bye.